All right. Well, uh, here is our uh, second podcast now of uh, the Half Dead Musings podcast. Um, I'm Marco. Uh, we have our co-host here, Marco, from uh, the Musings is by Marco channel currently. Who knows what the hell it'll end up as. <laughs> and uh, then uh, Brian here. Um, the Dead Man Dreams channel, of course. I'll be uploading it on this channel, of course. And yeah. uh, also, with I a might upload it on my channel too, but I don't know. Do it. Uh, we'll figure it out. But a much improved microphone this time, and we are talking about the Tesla robot, humanoid robot. All right, let's jump into the Tesla, the the robot, and how it was so important for uh, Elon Musk to take the company in this direction towards uh, fully automated driving cars and this uh, new humanoid robot called Optimus, Tesla bot yeah. or Optimus. All right, jump on in or, you know what? I'll ask you that first question. Let's jump into it because we're trying to make this one shorter. Uh, I have learned that the core purpose of these humanoid robots are to eliminate boring and repetitive tasks. How much cheaper will they be than human labor? Also, what specifics has he revealed as far as what tasks they can do? And a little side note, like Michio Kaku was talking about how dangerous it is to, for people to uh, fix the Fukushima uh, nuclear meltdown disaster because robots were, right. were so stupid back then, they couldn't even turn a screwdriver into a screw. So how, how much better are these robots going to be? Okay. All right. I'll try to remember all that. That's like four questions, but okay. Uh, the first thing was um, the cost. Uh, how much are they going to cost? Could you yeah, follow up with much, the mutual capture thing? What was the first part? Yeah, no, but the, how much cheaper will they be than human labor, basically? Eventually. Okay, than After, human labor. Yeah, yeah. And what will they be able to do? Yeah, exactly. The boring, okay. repetitive tasks, I know, but right. given specifics. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, this is still really early days for that. Um, they don't have a prototype yet. Um, they said maybe a prototype this year, but you have to uh, discount for Elon time, meaning <laughs> that everything's later than he says it is because he's super ambitious and optimistic about everything. So when he says a year, I add at least 50% to that, if not 100%. So it's at, at a six months or another year. Maybe they get a prototype. But Crazy. this is a huge new thing that he's into um the chip shortage okay let, let me all right, let me not go into the monologue let me okay let me try to actually answer this so uh how much will it cost um that is hard to say right now um obviously when you scale things up they're going to get cheaper so uh but tesla has the manufacturing um ability to make it in a really large quantities they got the key components are the batteries um they're gonna be making their own and everyone's making more batteries now the raw materials is no problem there's nothing else too exotic in there and then um uh, robotics is basically just like small ele electric motors for the different um joints that have to move and stuff and um uh, and that's it and uh, and oh and the brain part of it what about the microchip the the brain part of it and that's that kind of where fsd ties in and that's that's really the hard part for robotics not that the other stuff is easy but you can make a robot now that is can move pretty well and can maybe have a charge for a long enough time Washington to operate dynamics. but they're dumb they don't they're not able to do the things that people could do but this is where artificial intelligence comes in, and this is what Tesla is kind of um, in the lead on and working on. This is the new thing they want to focus on. Um, they're kind of developing. Elon thinks that the artificial intelligence they're using to develop uh, the car driving itself, the FSD, is um, is will is a good stepping stone into a more general artificial intelligence. Not like true general uh, artificial intelligence is required to make the Tesla bot work. Yeah. But it's basically, if you've got the neural nets, which is like a software version of how our brain works, where it's kind of like... Yeah, it's like it's kind of like you you tune it, but it kind of spits things out, and it's kind of uh, uh, you don't control every part of it. Like software, usual software, you have to write every single line of code. A neural net, you don't do that. It kind of does things for you, and you kind of set parameters. 
that's a whole uh, other thing. Uh, but um, so they're making a bunch of improvement on that. And they think that once the car and they're getting confident, they seem really confident now. I mean, he's been saying this forever, but now they seem more confident than they've ever been. And you can look at the progress they're making, and I know they're going to, it's obvious they're going to make a lot of progress. You can uh, ask me about that afterwards if yeah. you want. But um, yeah, we'll, so, well, so, once, so once the car gets to the point where it can drive itself, then the neural net, the artificial intelligence that allows the car to do that, is going to be uh, much more advanced than it is now. And it's not going to be a big leap to just kind of take that yeah. and put it into a robot form I mean, yeah, that it's able true. to walk it's able to detect objects around it like avoid them move through 3d space a yeah. big part of the uh, car system is labeling everything so you can label so you know what they are so you know what they're going to do like right now the car can already uh it starts it's starting to model like what uh, like a person versus a car and you know it, yeah. it thinks it about what a person could do differently and what a car can do like a person yeah. can only move so street. fast yeah cross the street might cross unexpectedly or cross in front um, of a vehicle and then pop out on the other side of the vehicle i remember elon talking about that like you don't yeah. expect certain objects to pass through the, the other side but when you see a humanoid figure you assume that it's going to pop out to the other side whether it's crossing yeah. the street or going to the uh, driver's uh door to open that up and so yeah and object permanence which is like peekaboo for kids like when they're like before <laughs> yeah. a certain age you like think it's magic it's like oh i'm here i'm not here <laughs> <laughs> because they don't have object permanence yet which yeah. is what the early neural net I doesn't heard, have like when they don't that. see it on the sensor then it's like doesn't exist so they yeah. have to have built in the code and the memory so it like remembers things when they go behind something else so it's not like this is i don't have to worry about it anymore it's like no if we see a guy walk behind a car and then he's walking towards the road yep. you have to expect that he might jump onto the road next because he's about to pop out he's out of your field of view yeah. so i remember there's there all kind of accident remember somebody in arizona was in the dark on a bicycle and somebody was test driving one of the uh or what was it the yeah. early tesla or was a it wasn't it a, a tesla it wasn't, no, wasn't a, tesla. a tesla it was yeah. uh no somebody it was killed. one of the other companies that video like showed the woman who was in the car monitoring it and like she got all shocked when they hit the biker uh the, not a it, just a regular bicycle not a motorcycle but yeah, yeah. that was scary footage yeah but, uh, it was, but I saw the footage, and most people driving would have killed the person, anyways. Like, if you saw, did you, you watch the footage? Because uh, that no, person, I, 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 I watched it. I only saw her. Reaction. Yeah, yeah, I watched it, and basically, there's no street lights around there. It's pitch black. The person <laughs> walking across the street had no lights. Uh, I oh, think she was it only was. Walking? I thought it was a bicycle. Yeah. She was walking the bicycle. Oh, she was standing next bicycle. to the bicycle and walking it, and it was all black. She was black. It was dark clothes, oh, and uh, and you know, and it's like, and this is a going. fast car. There's a lot. There's a lot of fast streets. I mean, it's a fast street. There's a lot of fast streets in Arizona. Oh, for sure. So it's like 40, 50 miles an hour. Or like all the streets. Everyone goes ten. That one wasn't, but yeah, I think most people would have hit that. But uh, it wasn't a Tesla. And Tesla is even the. Um, they have their full self-driving beta, which I'm talking about. Why they're making progress is they have 60,000 people doing this right now, which I found on the earning Jeez. call. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought it was, last we heard it was like 5,000. <laughs> now they got 60,000 people well, running this thing new... where the car is driving itself. Yeah, they, that's why they don't have new models coming out. Think about how much right. money that is. <laughs> <laughs> They're working on it, but the, the margins are going to be good once they solve it. Like, that's the good software oh, margins. are of margins, fucking though, juicy. when do you think that after they develop this humanoid robot and after the development and manufacturing costs, when will it actually become profitable? But also, they'll be able to use it for uh, developing future uh, Tesla technology, it's SpaceX technology, and Boring Company, or any of or, uh, or Neuralink. They'll be able to use these humanoid robots for any of those. It's yeah. as you said last Elon time, they, only they makes can... things for Mars. He makes everything for Mars. <laughs> it's just a, we're, we're a test, we're a playground. Earth is a playground to get things to work for Mars. So um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, how long they'd be profitable? Uh, I mean, it's definitely going to be a big investment for, uh, it's a lot of software type stuff. And um, I think that's the hardest part of it. I think with where they are with the, because they, they're so vertically integrated at Tesla that they, like other car manufacturers, just source things out. So it'd be hard for them. But Tesla, because they are fully electric vehicle, they've never messed around with gas engines yep. and they do everything in house. I don't think it's going to be very hard for them to make like a state of the art 
robot body that is the best compared to what everyone else and do it in a way that's not going to break the bank the where they're they're going to be uh you know it's just it's electric motors it's battery what about and Boston uh, dynamics though i mean they may be good on the mechanical side but i think the artificial intelligence side maybe with tesla is way ahead of them already i would imagine. right right yeah uh, Boston yeah. dynamics where you see their dog-like robots where they kick them and they like b abuse these things and try to knock them over and then <laughs> it, within like a split second these things they correct their uh their uh ability to uh, remain upright i'm, I'm going to insert that video i'm going to insert the uh, <laughs> uh a, a bunch of like, wild cool videos uh throughout this uh whole podcast because it's going to be pretty wild stuff so. <laughs> okay yeah i know this is this has got the tesla community is really excited about this tesla bot i know uh, wall street hates it and the stock is down but uh, everyone who really likes Tesla is like, can't stop talking about this freaking Tesla bot because it's so unexpected that it was going to become a priority. Like yeah. Elon said on this earnings call, it's like, Shock to me. yeah, they expected them. They're like, uh, so like, OK, we get it that with the factories coming online, you're going to have enough cars to grow 50 percent for this year and for next year. But what about like 2024 and 2025? Like, I don't think you're going to be able to grow 50 percent with just the suv and the sedan that are costing like fifty thousand dollars like plus right now like yeah. uh, you know and uh they're challenging him on that and he's basically saying well one uh fsd when the cars are going to drive themselves it's going to be the single biggest asset increase in value of any single asset in history taxi so no, no longer need taxi drivers <laughs> yeah and he's like so with because of how valuable fsd is going to be said we're we're not going to have to worry we're going to be able to sell those all day at yeah. you know that price and more and uh, okay um cool. i like you have to discount that a little bit because like he has been saying this a lot but for reasons i kind of with the 60k like test drivers and the progress they're making now they're way further ahead than they have been for a long time it's impossible to see that they're not going to make a ton of progress on full self-driving this year they're going to be way further along oh, than they yeah. are right now like, and already they got times, people who are going you're going like 30 minute drives. They're not doing anything in uh, certain areas like super Rural, downtown. Yeah. So suburbs are actually no problem for these cars already. I've seen a lot of videos where they're like, they're stopping at stoplights at stop signs or letting cars go. They're creeping forward. They're making right turns. They're making left turns. They're nice. slowing down. They're, they're changing lanes. Like they could do all that stuff when it's not too crazy right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're already saving lives. They'll save more. I was going to look up the Boston Dynamics uh, market cap since you right, uh, uh, mentioned that. All right. Remember, uh, but they got bought out. So I yeah, got, yeah. Uh, question three, I could jump into it right after that because it's a good okay. one. It comes into the safety aspect of this. So uh, I don't think uh, they probably won't say the market cap because I guess they got bought out by Google. Uh, uh, so I guess it's just the market cap of Google at this point. But like I was going to say that they're not like uh, resource wise. Boston Dynamics didn't have a ton of money. Like yeah. they probably were only like if even a billion, probably under a billion dollars like of That's money. The, the company I had to work with where Tesla's near a trillion market cap. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the SpaceX amount of like resources. Nothing. SpaceX is like nothing compared to Tesla's value. <laughs> what was it? Again? Oh, yeah. That up real Actually, quick. well, it's totally private. And I think they uh, raised funding. They keep oh. raising funding at different rounds. It was like 90 billion, I think, last time. Yeah. That, so was that guy from peanuts, Asia. Remember that guy from Asia? That, Dave uh, Lee or Ko yeah, Lee? The guy who's going to go on the rich guy who started the, the big online store. Uh, and then he's going to be one of the uh, first people going into space uh, with uh, Tesla. Uh, I, I remember he was there during the reveal of uh, the massive rocket one. What, what's that one called? The, uh, the the largest, newest one. The Starship? Yeah, I think he was there for the reveal that, at that. And there was like this big presentation with Elon and him there. And he was the big investor. He threw a lot of money into it. Uh, okay. I forget if it was Alibaba or uh, or one. It was one of those Asian uh, stores uh, that's not popular here. You ready for that question though? For the robot? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I must have my screen a little bit here, but I think I'm good. Uh, as far as safety goes, 
e uh, Elon Baby, says, <laughs> Elon says uh, most people can yeah. either outrun these robots or outpower these robots, these new ones. So, yeah, you don't want T1, uh, T100 yeah, models. Or no what was the Schwarzenegger stuff. models, like T101 or something? Uh, he I fought the it. T1000, so he yeah. was the model like lower than that. He was over T100s. Yeah, so uh, I saw this earlier. I forget the details. What is it capable of lifting, and how fast are they? I think they said it was like five miles per hour they could only move. And so the only yeah. people, and, and they could only lift like, uh, it was like 120 something or 150 pounds. So most people could either outpower them or outrun them. Right. The only people that have to fear them, I guess, are small children and uh, elderly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Dude, all the all the young and healthy will survive, just like this pandemic. But uh, the elderly <laughs> will die. The robots is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You can look up the specs online. I don't want to uh, mess oh. up. Okay. my screen but uh they they have us they have a page where they show like yeah they could deadlift yeah. like 100 pounds I think it was 100 and, and only yeah 125 something, something like that like. and they can only and it's like slower than you can run so yeah he said that specifically because he doesn't want to freak people out because if you have of yeah course, super strong robot it's, it's like it just decides the if it has the strength to like punch a hole in you yeah you know, I don't, but there's people always people wouldn't uh, feel comfortable there's around always that. People who resist change, like there were so many people calling this whole computer sure. digital era a, a joke and a fluke that's going to go away. Uh, my dad always, uh, I just mentioned this the other day on the email that we're in, but my dad says that there was You're a guy talk when crap was, about your dad no oh, your he, he was saying friend. he was saying there was a, a guy at United right before the digital age took off, and there, he was like. Everybody Microsoft invest pay. in Microsoft. Yeah, everybody invest in Microsoft. And he was like telling everybody, and then he just disappears one day, and he's probably filthy rich. And yeah, you know, uh, if he invested everything he had in the Microsoft so, uh, back in the nineties, for sure he's loaded. Tesla, it's and true. The robot, it, it, and they're already ten x. Yeah, but now the robot gives them another ten x or more built into it. Exactly. And what do you mean? By there's 10X, this great ten x in the value of the stock price from, from when they origin from the initial price offering you mean no from right now 10x from where though what does that even mean like i don't get it i don't follow 10x it. the price so it's oh, at like i got you i thought you were saying the, the stock price, price from the previous yeah. price okay i got from right now from right, from right, right now, now to the future you're saying yeah okay. yeah that okay Cause it matters because you buy it now you want it, how much higher can it go okay I got it's you. another 10x built in easy at this point if not more I got um you. and because that's the amount of value they're going to provide there's a good video uh by stephen mark ryan it's like a 30 second video and um i'll link it to you actually um he just shows like a little like a pie chart thing and it shows like uh you know it's one of those things that compare the size of different things because it's like uh um eh, well whatever so it's like a graphic thing and it shows like uh energy is like a little circle and then uh, it's like uh and transportation is like about the size of energy is these little circles and then it shows as big and it zooms out it zooms out and it shows inside this huge fucking circle is labor that's so the tesla bot replaces labor oh man and this is the size it's, it's each size represents the money value of it yeah, and then the universe. and then he zooms out wait and then he zooms out again and it's like you didn't you thought i was done no and it zooms out more and more and it's like triple the size you, that, that that huge difference just was and that's all of labor and uh this is the path this is gives them another exponential s curve 10x opportunity where it's a whole new market that no one else is in that they could be first that they could corner and it's just going to be a huge value uh you know uh if you got a couple tesla bots uh yeah i mean you have no late there's no labor shortage if you have tesla bots and they're working that's crazy. I mean, uh, yeah, I and, and those, I, I trust chart, him to do it well, too. That size chart, that's what they do with uh, on these universe videos where they show the size of Earth that, or the moon first, and then Earth, and then it goes up to the sun. And the next thing you know, it's like... It's crazy how much bigger the sun is than the Earth. I mean, and then it's yeah. crazy how our sun is, like, super tiny compared to most yeah. suns. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it blows your mind. I mean, galaxy. it's like... And then they go to, at the very end of everything. It's like the largest of the largest suns or ever like discovered. And oh man, it's crazy. All right, let's jump on into uh, number four. Do you know what materials these new robo bots, these new Tesla bots, I mean, are going to be made of? Has they have they announced that yet? 
No, no idea. I mean, uh, aluminum's lightweight, um, yeah. so that would make sense. Uh, they're, a lot of their cars they're making out of, um, they're doing their casting machines for their cars are using molten aluminum. Uh, so I would assume they do that. They make like a casting. It's a lot easier to make a casting that size versus a third of a car. So they have an easier time doing a smaller casting. Aluminum is a good lightweight. Uh, it's not too expensive. And uh, you need the most efficient batteries in there, obviously, because you want to save on weight. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, you got your uh, standard microchip components. You got cameras. Cameras are pretty cheap and lightweight at this point. You can have, uh, you know, you can have multiple cameras. Uh, I think it has a little screen for a face. Uh, we should definitely put up a picture. Yeah, I, I was, uh, oh, I'm definitely going this. to. I'm going to. I'm going to put the dancing video of <laughs> that they had, even though it wasn't a real bot. It was like a preview bot of uh, where Elon uh, had some guy dressed up like a robot come up on stage. Uh, if you want to do it right now, well, you could. But yeah, I'm going to do it right now, and because uh, yeah, I should be able to do this actually. And I was going to ask uh, about if they speak and listen like uh, smart assistants do, like uh, Google Assistant or Alexa or any of those. Uh, do you know if they're going to have that kind of – you talk to them at all, you know? Uh, for sure they're going to um, – um, for sure it's going to have voice uh, capability. Um, the point is because you're going to be able to uh, – can you see my screen right now? I have to click watch stream in order. Should I click it? I guess. Yeah. All right. Now it's taking over the entire screen practically, and we're we're small. So. Okay. It's not. Um, it's probably not recording this on my end, but whatever. Um, yeah. Just hit images. Yeah. There you go. Oh, here. So yeah, here's that one, one of the things from. It has the weight, yeah, from earlier. Yeah. So this has some stats here. Let, let's read them. Uh, I read can those do this. No, not Google Lens. I just wanted to make it bigger. <laughs> it doesn't get bigger, I don't think. So uh, can, yeah. I can read it though. It says. Yeah, it's pretty clear. Five eight is the height, so he's going to be one inch tall. Like, look me. at this stuff that he says. Friendly. <laughs> <laughs> World built by humans for humans, even though it's a robot. <laughs> <laughs> eliminate dangerous repetitive oh yeah the dangerous aspect we I haven't bet. hit on yet like coal miners imagine the potential for coal miners like remember well, we hopefully were, we don't have too much more coal well look at this remember <laughs> yeah. we were at that museum in arizona together where they had uh real human organs encased in this uh some kind of plastic that was see-through that preserved the organs and oh, it yeah. showed a uh, it showed the very it showed different lungs if any of you listening right now live in a city even if you never had a cigarette in your life, you have black spots on your lungs. And uh, yeah. and also, the only people in this world who have perfectly pink, great lungs are people who live in the middle of nowhere on islands. And uh, cigarette smokers are definitely have like way worse lungs, but there's nothing worse than coal miners' lungs, black lung. I mean, it was the most ridiculous like difference ever between just an average smoker's lungs and the black lung. Like It was... It blew it blew my mind. Like coal mining is so dangerous. If we can get the robots to replace the coal miners or have like the most advanced like oxygen tanks for them at least. Yeah. To, or in yeah. factories even, there can be Those a lot chemicals. of uh stuff that gets thrown up in the air when you're working with <laughs> welding and uh cutting things. You know, oh, yeah. you get all these kind of air like metals can get aerosolized and stuff and asbestos like stuff. Yeah, and even just every day, our quality is big. So, uh, you know, we should all have more things, I think, to get us cleaner air. Um, I think the air filters in cars should be better, especially with before we got all electric cars. You're driving down the road. It's all just, you know, a tailpipe exhaust coming out of everyone as everyone else drives through it. Yeah, it's horrible. It's not a very great air to be driving through and breathing in all the time. Highways um, and gridlock. Yeah, so, uh, you know, if they put HEPA filters in cars, it'll make a big difference. Uh, some Teslas have that, which I appreciate. One of the things uh, that they care about their customers on, and yeah. they've done tests on that. And I have HEPA filters in the house. You don't run, want to use them for your AC system because they can stress it a bit more, and then, you know, you don't want to wear that out. But um, uh, here, uh, you see, here's another yeah, one, technical detail like page. what you were saying earlier. It says lightweight Yeah, materials. it's got to be lightweight because it's got to save on the battery. And, 
and make you know, it weak uh, the heavier it is his ass if you have to <laughs> right it's kind of like shove it over and um, i wonder if jog it's gonna be as good as the boston dynamics is like keeping its balance like if you like stick it in the Definitely. face like punch it like in the face or something <laughs> just for fun like if you had a bad day at work you come home you punch it in the face is it going to stay up or is it going to fall down and like break something yeah I wonder well if you pay for it then you're probably <laughs> going to be less uh, happy about punching it if it's expensive but uh yeah, but, but i think uh, it's kind of a pretty good balance you know it's you it, yeah who think... punch their wives though and they pay for their wives like if, if they're the only worker so <laughs> who knows they'll hurt their hands though <laughs> oh man uh yeah uh i think to answer your question probably yes <laughs> all right all right let me see i got some more here uh oh i can uh see all three things on my screen that's pretty cool yeah i see all three it shows that us is small though for now but uh i'm learning new stuff all the time so I probably should have had it like that before i get to the hilarious question are we losing our humanity through this technology and through these robots? But is it worth it? That's a, a big question because I'm sure there's a lot of people that would be like, I'm never having one of these, just like how there's a lot of Alexa holdouts and smart home uh, holdouts. And uh, are we losing our humanity? I think we are. If you look at how for tens of thousands of years already, humanity has always had like community uh space and where people get together and have more fun especially with this pandemic we're losing our humanity more than ever everybody's communicating through screens only these days especially if you live in cold climates and uh it's been a trend like that for a while where we're not getting together and in groups you you, you have that more in the hot climates like uh, you know hermosa beach california when down there or even for venice beach even though the poverty situation is getting out of control over there now but uh what do you think I, it's we're losing it i think i think uh it's not as simple I, first i'd say we never had our humanity to lose in the first place hmm. um i'd say that um we're kind of like we are very um old hardware as our bodies and we're still not adapted to modern civilization and especially like as society hopefully gets more better and polite yeah. we still have these kind of uh long evolution of doing bad things and kind of irrational things hmm. and uh it's going to take time to catch up there and i think uh, there's a lot of aspects <laughs> to that i think a lot of it is um is um i'm just saying face uh, to a face. lot of a lot of poverty as well. I think uh, when people have more money and they're happier, they're more likely to uh, get out more and to socialize more. And um, I was just actually hearing about this with the, there's kind of like this trend with a lot of uh, younger men who um, um, they uh, haven't been doing as well as other groups and even women with uh, the pandemic and uh, with recent times older men and, have more uh, money too and they get the women income inequality yeah yep. it's kind of the number one thing that a lot of women look for for marriage is like a stable income yeah, and, stability. A, yeah, stability. and a good uh yeah good uh, good job and uh good uh, income and support a family and a lot of guys aren't especially if you're not college educated um but sometimes even if you are they're student debt and uh a lot of guys just don't see that themselves as that uh financially stable so they don't even try in the first place and um uh, yeah, they get depressed and they give up and then they start raging at others on the internet <laughs> yeah there's a kind of a vicious spiral and uh <laughs> guys don't guys need like a, a sense of like meaning and the like a mission and like they feel like valuable and and that they can provide and their uh purpose and yeah, yeah. and that's uh that's kind of missing uh in a lot of uh guys today and uh it's a big problem for marriage rates um for uh health um for the economy for uh yeah our future really and uh also people like me know that marriage is a trap like the legal system i mean unless you find the perfect woman like that's why i'm single by choice i'm like 
I'd rather be single than have a divorce and be trapped and lose half of what I own. And then the legal system screws over men over and over again. And that's a big part of the reason why Robin Williams committed suicide. Because his divorce happened. Because of his wife? Well, no, his divorce happened at the peak of his career when he was making a ton of money. And, you know, all actors as they age, even Bill Murray, my all-time favorite like comedic actor... Uh, he's been having lesser and lesser roles, and uh, I mean, the, I, even the greatest icons of all time have lesser roles, and they make less money over time. So what's interesting is that the statistics don't agree with you, though. Well, the statistics say guys who are single are tend to die ten years earlier on average than guys who are married. Well, hang on, and they tend the to point, commit though. suicide more often, and they tend to uh, have more chronic uh, health problems as well. That's what the I, statistics I say. I, heard those, I know this but, is anecdotal. But what I'm saying yeah. is this, the statistics on men getting screwed over through the legal system are, are through the roof. So basically, you're going to get screwed in life no matter what. For most people are going to get screwed no matter what your choice is. And you just got to be lucky enough or good-looking enough or talented enough to make it in this world. Otherwise, you're screwed anyway. <laughs> I mean, it seems like you're screwed either either way. But Robin Williams, the court... can order. be no matter what. But I'm just on average. That's kind of what the statistics point to. So I guess that's kind of the easiest way to lean of course yeah, everyone's why don't different you get rid of this window so we're back on screen large again we're only tiny little specks on here we're not we're tiny yeah. on here uh yeah we want to be large and in charge yeah. <laughs> we're not talking about tesla anymore right now masters of our own destiny <laughs> anyways back to the robin williams thing uh the courts are ordering him to pay the money that he was making at the prime of his career and he was not making that money anymore. So now he had to like do these desperate roles and he knew it was horrible on his mental health. He was having alcohol alcoholism uh, issues and uh, he was about to do uh, another Mrs. Doubtfire movie. And uh, he really- Mrs. Doubtfire was freaking hilarious though. He didn't want to do it? Good. Uh, it sounded like, <laughs> like he it. didn't want to and he was already doing all these other movies where he was away from home where he knew his mental health would go way down as he was away from home but out of financial desperation from the divorce robin williams and and also it came out that he had uh, a i forget what disease it was it, it might have been parkinson's he had uh, a disease that he was diagnosed with and he just felt like he was trapped in life and uh so that was no matter how much people no matter how many people loved him you know it's sad that uh he had uh he felt like he was trapped enough to uh, off himself so definitely is sad um it definitely is sad um and yeah we can get into so, the funny uh, part that was now. a nice little tangent there yeah we, we uh <laughs> how long has this been going i i can't see the clock so whatever all right here i'm just gonna jump into it because i like 50 minutes or no it's last because we got started later all right uh and for the wild funny uh aspect of this conversation i thought i was thinking about this all right here's the question for years there have been creepy realistic uh full-size sex dolls Tesla would certainly Ooh. be the company at the oh, forefront yeah. <laughs> of making. Yeah, yeah. The most... He already said he's going to make it a cat, cat right, girl robot. Let me robot. get this question out. <laughs> Tesla would certainly be at the company, uh, the company at the forefront of making the most sophisticated of sex bots in the future. Vacuum functions. They would, and also a quick answer. Uh, I would. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would oh, gonna... my, my quick answer i would never go near one i don't want to have anything to do with it i've seen it on mad ventures it just creeps me out it feels weird but uh clearly sex sells look at the porn site visitor numbers compared to like uh you know informative web pages and stuff like sex sells Pornhub is doing like great i don't even know what the numbers are but it's crazy and so i think if there's money there they would make these dolls what do you think I think porn and sex have been one of the main drivers of new technology. And uh, <laughs> if you invent something, it's going to be used for porn and sex first. You so look at the flashlight, Joe Rogan flashlight in the early days. He promoted, <laughs> also, right? Weird and stuff. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, I don't know if uh, they would do that straight from the factory. I'm sure, like there would be a third party maybe coming in but i don't know you can imagine all kinds of things could have like vacuum functions so you feel like a suction you know you have oral you can have vaginal you can have anal 
You can have a self-cleaning function would be what good because like that's one of the most annoying things. Because if you do uh, and if you do, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Because uh, if you have <laughs> like the, the cleanup is one of the most annoying things. So if it could somehow self-clean and get rid of, uh, you know, the uh, just like the valuable the genetic window. material, just then out uh, the window or something. <laughs> <laughs> Some guys walking down the street. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll think it's a bird. Uh, for real, for real. Uh, I don't know. I mean. Um, you can imagine that so, uh, like a world where a bunch of guys are just with the uh, sex spots like, and uh, there's even a bigger Brunner. population problem. But then again, Elon's worried about population collapse and he's worried about declining birth rate. Ooh. So he might not want to put that in because he could that I could see that making that even worse. You were starting to answer when I was asking it and you said something. Uh, like, yes, Elon something. Did, did he say he was going to make one, you said, or what did, what did you say? Yeah, he's uh, mentioned uh, like he wants a future with like cat girls. Cat? Um, yeah, because that's like a thing in anime, you know, cat girls. Uh, oh, okay. I'll be yeah, playing yeah. the cat girls. I've been, I've been so. getting back into it lately. Uh, you know, Attack on Titan, uh, Dororo. I'm watching now, and that Shiki one was awesome. So, all right. Side note. All right, let's go back. To yeah, that. the newest season is awesome. By the way, it's the last. So it's the final season. Oh yeah, my god, it's a spoil. lot of twists. Yeah, spoiling it right now. That would suck. There's a lot of that twists. That's the spoiler. <laughs> That's the spoiler. All right. There's lots of twists. All right. And anything it's pretty mind blowing. Should we? Uh, anything else to add on the uh, robot situation? We could talk about maybe the future of where they're uh, heading. How, like, how advanced can you imagine it? Like, maybe. I mean, maybe uh, like yeah, it's like it it's like FSD and bots are kind of connected, but I feel like they can be their whole own thing. Like, it could be a whole podcast just about FSD and whole thing F about bots. FSD bot. though, that is full. Self driving, right? Yeah. You're so yeah. used to it. I just want to make sure. I should have said, I know. clarified that earlier. Uh, with, it's a mouthful, like, because how are you going to say it? Is it robo taxi maybe is it get a yeah. cross more easily? But it's not going to be a robo taxi out of the gate. That's going to require some regulation type stuff. When they first get it out, it's going to be like a feature and it's going to be uh, like there's these levels and it's going to be where it really is good enough to drive itself, but they still need you to pay attention because of regulation. So that's kind of going to be the yeah. first step. That's going to be kind of a gradual you thing know, as well. Use the Tesla bot to sit in the driver's seat and just keep its hands on the wheel. <laughs> I saw that. It's like, wouldn't it be funny if for uh, cars that don't have uh, the ability of the self-drive, then you just send the Tesla bot into them. And have so a blow up dial every car. Blow up. And, and the fast <laughs> lanes in L.A. have a blow-up dial in one seat. There were two Tesla bo uh, bots. And, uh... yeah. <laughs> but then you get into the sextile problem again. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, with Tesla, there's a lot. So, um, Imagine a, a robot that could massage you like a professional. It would, it's so expensive possible. for a massage. It's all types of things. So, uh, yeah, the, the value is, in, uh, is <coughs> immeasurable. It's huge. If you can have a role, you just think of all kinds of jobs. And I mean, and that's just like physical stuff. Like they're going to not only the bot, but it's going to be thinking stuff, too, that you don't necessarily need a body for. You don't need a body for a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs are kind of thinking jobs. So you can think as this artificial intelligence gets better, it's also going to replace more thinking jobs. And at that point, kind of very little well, like is calculator safe. Calculator jobs, like uh, uh, mathematician jobs, I bet you they'll be better than the best mathematicians of all time, kind of like how quantum computing is heading in that direction. Imagine yeah. quantum computing combining with the Tesla bots of the future. That's ridiculous. Hum humans are going to be like dumb monkeys at that point. They'll be like, I can see how they would turn on us like Terminator style at that point. They would outthink the uh, safety measures put in place in order to pr make them never attack humans. It, it seems like a possibility at least. <laughs> Yeah, but I think uh, it's going to be a long time. Like, that's the difference between general artificial intelligence and, like, a more specific intelligences. Like, you can have a, a, a software that's smart enough to, like, be in a factory, because that's probably where they're going to use them first. Like, yeah. it could be in the factory and um, be replacing some workers on the line. And really, they just have to be able to, you know, find parts, like move them around, get them into the right place, have dexterity, have some feel, and yeah. maybe some basic communication, <laughs> respond to some simple voice commands like follow me, stop, <laughs> uh, you know, recharge, um, um, 
replace the toilet paper roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one wants to do that, right? You know, clean the floor, um, paint the fence, uh, wax the car. Uh, the toxic chemicals. <laughs> oh, <it's off. laughs> yeah. Stuff like and, that. Uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, and in the house, like massage, that's pretty expensive. Imagine in so. hospitals, though, yeah. like all that all that toxic uh, needle waste they have, and potentially disease uh, containing uh, blood. Highly infectious kind of patients. People have a, a oh, patient a with highly test. infectious. Imagine if the robots could be trained to do COVID testing. They don't even need to wear a mask. Like that would right. be amazing. Like there's so many possibilities for the future. Uh, yeah, even future pandemics, they're going to happen eventually. So yeah, and you can send them in like even a new disease you don't even know what it is yet, and uh, they can go right in and start collecting data and like analyzing yeah. and taking samples. So, yeah. You don't have to worry about anyone getting sick. You can send them into quarantine areas. Similar to how that um, Mars rover is on the uh, Mars surface, going to the riverbeds now in order to take the samples from the soil to see if life ever existed there. They could test it by themselves on the spot. You could create custom robots to go and find even the source of the diseases or whatever where uh, yep. and they could have uh, networking amongst each other to figure out where the most likely next area is of people who are going to have the uh, covid or the sickness or whatever yeah this is very yeah. fascinating you can stuff. actually you can easily do that with like a like a cell tower type thing and the cell tower could give out like a wi-fi signal to these robots yeah and then the cell tower could be a, a te um uplinked to the uh, starlink satellites from spacex so which far. is under the, one of the elon musk companies too yeah so it kind of it can be all connected that like that and that's what's going to make them really smart is <clears throat> just like the car gets better over time and they were the first company to do over the air updates the robot will get smarter over time and there's yeah. going to be software updates so uh it's going to be the improvement i mean the first ones Versus the ones like five years after that, there's going to be no comparison. I mean, I guess they, they will be the same because they'll keep improving. I think uh, right? my, my good friend, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but he'll know if, uh, who he is if he sees this. Uh, he and a bunch of other uh, people uh, online, they're, they're saying that the, me the next big thing after this pandemic is going to be massive hacking attacks. Imagine if society is like super self, uh, or not self-reliant, but super reliant on all these robots and it's uh in the satellites imagine if china with their great technology they're really great on the forefront of technology and right now imagine if china hacks all the uh, robots uh that elon has created or whoever creates after elon imagine if it, it could be an act of warfare where you hack the robots that are supposed yeah. to be serving the people that's a real possibility too that's that's oh yeah crazy. that could be it's considered the same as like invading uh with troops if that was the case i oh, mean that would yeah. be if they're weapons. everywhere okay. and they're hacking so yeah i mean i i think security is gonna have to be like a huge focus for them uh at, on how they develop it they're gonna need uh, i saw on twitter someone was like can you please make sure you put in like a, a hard shutoff switch on it that can't be bypassed he's like that's what they messed up in every sci-fi movie is they never had a switch for the robot never that you could just shut that? it off no that's what someone was responding to oh, you okay. on uh he's had, been having a lot of tweets on this lately uh that well, would actually be kind of interesting to look Twitter. at i've been just yeah. looking at everything lately He's got a I actually, social media company coming up, uh, I hear, too. He announced, I believe. I haven't heard that. Um, but uh, I know yeah, that um, about it. Uh, he mentioned, um, come on, Twitter, log me in, you douchebag. <laughs> you quit. <laughs> Yeah, my last Elon, class? Is that not on this there, browser? There's been a lot of, uh, like, uh, I follow a wide variety of people on Twitter, you know, some liberal, some conservative, and one of these conservative guys was saying, uh, his name's Dinesh D'Souza, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I had a little cough, uh, Dinesh D'Souza, he was talking about how there's so many other ways that Elon could have uh, impacted the world in a, a greater way, and so I, that was the first I heard of it. Then I, I saw another three or four people tweeting about this, like uh, Elon, I guess, is really either doing it or strongly contemplate uh, contemplating uh, doing it. So uh doing what exactly social media having his own social media thing where oh. hopefully it'll be censorship 
free. Hopefully he'll, be, uh, you know, as far as, of course, just straight up hate speech and racism and all that garbage needs to get out as fast as possible. And anti-trans stuff, you know. Okay. Let me, Can you uh, click on this? Uh... To it. All right, okay. we're there. Get up here. <coughs> okay, so you could see it at least. Uh, oh yeah, it's taking up most I, of the, should... the stream here. Uh, so yeah, keep going. I should set this up. Now, what if I... What are you trying to do? Here it is. What if I move it over to my other monitor? Yeah, you can still see it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so these are all his tweets and replies. I'm actually going to check out the new Halo game because he's. I guess he's playing it and he likes it. It came out like last month. The, yeah, but the campaign hasn't come out. I guess the campaign just came out. The PvP has been there, but I've never been interested in the PvP as much. I like the campaign, so I just check that uh, out. The last games that I ever uh, played lately is uh, Halo games. I got through, I think, uh, three or four of them on the hardest difficulty. Uh, it's fun playing on the hardest difficulty. And I highly For the recommend. Halo games? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, you got to redo uh, so many. You have to retry the hard parts over and over again. Yeah. To how to tweak whatever thing is wrong. And then sometimes you have to get good with your grenade throws. Yep, and uh, also you gotta always figure out the timing of where, when you're gonna step in one area, when are the enemies gonna come out of a door behind you, stuff like that. You have to factor in everything. Yeah. And it, it, I've been playing a lot of. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no worries. I was done. Go for it. Uh, I was just gonna say I've been playing a lot of Witcher Three lately, and uh, yeah, I'm on the highest difficulty, but it's not all that hard. You can get uh killed but uh if you have a good build and i tend to min max everything then it's kind of hard to die <laughs> nice. so even though it's on the hardest mode it's uh, it's not that hard you don't end nice. up dying that much it's a beautiful game though there's so much to it all right so here's one thing so um here was a question this is a guy i follow on youtube uh dave lee um uh, he has some people that he responds to on twitter and he was saying, I think it's possible that Elon Musk was shown a better than expected super early humanoid robot prototype by his team, perhaps one that can walk and a, be a rough port of FSD. Made it obvious to him that Tesla needs to double down on this. Elon responded to this, says, I'm driving this program personally, as is the case for almost all new programs. So kind of like step up on this, like, no, it's not that my team's working on it and they showed me something that impressed me. He's like, I'm heading it. I know everything that's going on with it. So no, he's like, that's not how I roll. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm balls deep in all of these new projects. Sweet. So, um, and I love it because, um, he knows how to drive these teams and he gets like great results and he really pushes them and he's a super smart dude. So, uh, he's, he's smart driving smart. it personally and he wants to focus on it. And he sees that, uh, this uh, this is big, and they should uh, uh, pivot to that. That actor um, right there, that actress. I'm not a fan. Did you? Uh, yeah, some of his. Uh, I think her name is. Yeah, I'm not a fan. She's I don't agree other. with every. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like a blind uh, follower of Elon Musk. Like he's God. Like yeah, he's exactly. uh, has a lot of things I like about him. But there's some things I don't agree with him on. Um, I don't agree with some of his takes <laughs> on the the pandemic. Um, I understand that his priority is to um get all these things done that are really important and he doesn't want to be slowed down whenever possible yeah um but um, he has some um, when he's bashing the being taxed so much because he's paying uh, he's paying more taxes than any other human uh, any other american in uh usa history right yeah they had some things there um you know um I, yeah, I wish they would get along. I like Bernie and I like Elon. So uh, I I don't know why. I know Bernie and a lot of progressives are against all billionaires just as a matter of principle. Yeah. But if ever there was a billionaire that you don't want to yeah. go after, it's the guy who's giving humanity. us the solutions to save humanity that's going to stop climate change, <laughs> that's going to stop uh, massive uh uh problems yeah, with civilization that's getting rid of all the polluting vehicles and coal power plants and uh yeah. and you know amazon, these things weren't going to happen if he wasn't around like yeah. they didn't want to do this stuff amazon and walmart and like all these big stores they shouldn't be getting the huge tax breaks that they are elon and the people who are you know 
Oh, by the way, it, Elon Here's the thing with the, Biden the biggest breaks, but also the uh, solar tax thing that what was it in California? They were going to start charging people more taxes on the solar panels. The whole point yeah. of the solar panels it's happening all over the country. Oh, I thought it was a California. It sucks. Or, no, they well, it's worse there. But like California had a good deal where they would get good money for um, uh, the energy they sell back. But like here in Arizona, they used to have that and then they switched over. It's one of the few states that switched where you don't pay, you don't get paid for the extra energy and that kills into the uh, uh, kind of the economics of getting solar as well. Yeah. So you see this in a lot of states and it's really counterproductive to where we need to go. And it kind of feels like the uh, utilities are being a bit greedy in a way. I understand that sure. um, they have some issues where it could get really expensive if everyone got solar and um and they were stuck kind of with just the worst parts without money to to compensate to me it, it might not work in an extreme but you add batteries to everyone along with solar that problem goes away um so true that should uh that should just be a part of it here uh yeah, like when i was selling solar panels out uh i sold them out in california in right the whole point was to have the you weren't storing them on batteries at that time because the battery technology was expensive, expensive and not yeah. that efficient so it was all about selling them back to the electric grid because the electric grid was so overwhelmed they do those uh, uh blackout periods and uh so it's it man especially during the really uh, bad heat waves out there they're limiting like water usage and electric and sometimes during those uh high fire uh uh risk at times during the uh what's that called the uh there's a name uh, about the wind what a shithead twitter is like once it let me look a little bit and then now i'm like timed out it's like log in or sign up or we won't let you look anymore and I, if you I reload have that problem like i've never seen that problem before well, because I'm not signed in on this computer. I don't use this computer too much anymore oh. um, because of the chair situation. The Again? But I'm not logged in. And I guess my password manager is not installed here oh, for well. some... I bet it is, but... Let's, yeah. let's think about more uh, future possibilities with these robots. Uh, okay. Might as well. Instead. Well, okay, what do you think well. about the stock? What do you think about... If you were to invest, do you think uh, you would screen. want to invest in Tesla? Yeah, okay. then we can get big again. Uh, what uh, if I was going to invest? What'd you say? Um, do you think um, if you were to invest in a stock, um, would you do you feel like you could be persuaded to invest in Tesla stock? Do you think that yeah, uh, it would be a good sure. investment? Now, the more I look into it now, I think I'm going to have to. Like, uh, I have my safe mutual fund going, and uh, I think I'm going to put a big chunk of what i do have saved up into it just because it seems inevitable like he's he's smarter than anyone else uh the vision is he's already proven over and over again that his vision is uh, elon's vision is uh beyond anybody else on the planet's vision I mean, yeah he like brings things to reality that uh, yeah. no one else has like and he's already proved it with electric cars he's all transforming doubters, yeah. cars to electric. doubters i like that old clip uh from this one guy uh some some guy on fox news or cnn or something like that he was an analyst he's like there were the plenty number, of those the number one stock that's garbage is tesla <laughs> stock get rid of tesla stock right away it's so stupid you know why because he was shorting it he was uh -oh. bad. He would make money if it went down. That <clears throat> happens all the time what was on that those guy's shows. Do uh, you remember? I have no idea. But there were tons of short sellers. At one point, Tesla was the most shorted stock on the stock market. That's kind of what started like the GME and AMC stuff. Like they shorted uh, to ridiculous levels, and then a group on Reddit f found out, and they exactly. realized if they drove the price up enough, they were trapped. All these short sellers, yeah, and great. you could move the price up ridiculous. And I was in on that, and I made some money off of that. But I would have made way more if the the kind of the big the big guys didn't step in and said, "Oh, we yeah. have to stop this because yeah, suddenly everyone's all the big banks are going to go bankrupt." Well. It's not my fault. That's our money. They screwed up, yeah. so we should get that. How come nobody? And they stepped them? in. How come there's not a class action lawsuit where everybody who got yeah. screwed by that uh, is that uh, prohibited by law? Is it what? What the hell is this? I don't get it. It's just on a. It's on like a case by case basis right now. I've heard of some people getting some money out of some of their brokers, 
And I probably should actually, because I definitely did lose money because of that. Um, but it, it was because it goes up to like a high level. It was like uh, these kind of like backbone <coughs> structures that are like part of our capital markets. Like we're kind of seem to be in on it or like uh, it's hard to see exactly how far up it goes. So they yeah. were like, well, you know, technically it's, there's always like a fine print. It's like, well, we could do anything we want yeah. if it's uh, if it's an emergency. Like, you know, this was an emergency <laughs> and what are you going to do? You know, Sorry. Me of the South Park episode, you know, the human centipede, that horrible thing. Like, the, <laughs> South Park yeah. made an episode called the human centip- cent- iPad. And they're like, you know, great, you agreed. Yeah, what a great you segue. Agreed. <laughs> you, you, you agreed when you were trying to use. Oh, because you didn't read that that thing. That's like a hundred pages. Yeah, and you like always click so okay. As long as you say I yeah. agree, well, well, here you now you're for. <laughs> Now you're forced <laughs> to be a human centipede. And then, like, and then, remember the guy in the front in the South Park episode? He's got like some. The like, guy in the front is way better off than everyone else. Yeah, but the guy had two choices centipede. of food. He's like the cuttlefish. Do you want the cuttlefish or something that would be like, yeah. way like better for the people behind him? Yeah, and, like the people are like trying to like or something that gives him like him. diarrhea. Yeah, he's like. <laughs> No, not the cuttlefish. No, not the cuttlefish. Or he was saying something like that. And then he goes, "Oh, yes, yeah. he says cuttlefish." And then he eats the, like the worst thing possible. <laughs> uh, South Park. Did you see crazy. the actual movie that was based no, on? No, I, I, I did. Because uh, I heard because I wanted to check it out. I, I, uh, it's it's like a grossness factor. Like it's uh, it's kind of like a funny thing. It's uh, like for me, I but it's seen. nice to know. Yeah, it's uh, I like it's crazy. Movies, though I like the crazy stuff, like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from the nineteen sixty nine or whatever it was. That was so much better than the more recent one that was like just straight up violence and like watching the, right. the nails rip off of people as they're grabbing concrete walls and being dri- like it was yeah. too violent and uh, the new yeah. one and not as suspenseful the the yeah like uh hits you over the head with it it's like a scarier it's one it's more of a, like where I want a to thinking shut it thing yeah it was yeah. so repulsive where i wanted to shut it off right away but the 1969 not truly one, scary it was it was terrifying at parts, but then it was like a psychological thr- thriller at parts too, where it's just like you know something horrible is about to happen. Like when they're sitting at a, I'm not gonna say too much to, to spoil it, but like there's oh, come on, it's an old movie. I think you're okay right, at this well, point. Well, like, like <laughs> it's only been out for this one 40, woman 50 years. with all these crazy people at this table, and you just feel like hell is about to break loose. And it's just mm-hmm. like a matter of time before she's dead. And then they and, sit in it, like they sit in the tension, and they they don't uh, yeah, they, don't they don't feel don't the need rush. to rush and move to something else. They yeah. let you kind of. That's what makes it so great. Yeah, the tension, uh, like psychological thrillers, like Hitchcock. Hitchcock was the master of that. Even though his age, yeah. his movies haven't aged as well as like the brand new movies out nowadays with the young yeah. attention span people, like a bunch of people. Yeah, like, they're like yeah. assuming everyone has ADHD. That yeah. you can't pay attention to one thing for that long. <laughs> like oh they'll lose interest if they're just sitting there saying nothing it's like well that's part of the the mood and the feeling that makes the mood yeah the better like dr strange love you ever see dr strange love it's one of the greatest yeah, of course. Uh, comedies like i tried showing it to my brother and like a bunch of uh, like uh, another friend of ours i don't know if he wants to be uh, mentioned but then they're like yeah. this is so stupid you look at the reviews on, on imdb and stuff and it's like nine out of ten one of the greatest yeah. films ever made it's hilarious uh peter it is hilarious it's it's a oh my god him as the nazi is so great i mean well i mean he did like everything in that movie how many parts did he play he was uh was he, he was a guy yeah he was multiple parts so one that, was yeah, the guy one yeah the greatest actors ever he, he came in and he was talking to that crazy general who was all about his bodily fluids being pure and he had like <laughs> erectile dysfunction disorder he couldn't get up with women and he's blaming it on like russians like poisoning the water <laughs> and like making it not pure that's I why forget. he has to like nuke him yeah, the nazi in the wheelchair and then he was a Nazi, yeah, he was like he's one of those guys like Operation Paperclip, where like we got Nazis from World War Two and brought him uh, over to help Dr. us. Doctor Death, Doctor Mengele, that's the guy who yeah. did all the crazy. I, I believe that yeah. was who did all. So he'd be like talking and about things. He's like, and uh, yes, and we made the bomb, and um, <laughs> and so in the next world order, uh, we'll have to have much many more females than males to repopulate <laughs> the earth. And he's like. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, so like it's like it's like he wants to heil automatically, and he's like has yeah, to stop to himself. It. He's trying to do the heil Hitler, and yeah. he's like has to try to stop oh, himself. For, for those of you who are not aware of Operation, uh, or was it Project Paperclip or Operation? I, I thought it was Project Paperclip, Paperclip. something. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Project Paperclip, where after World War II, the USA brought in all these genius Nazi uh, scientists. Werner von Braun uh, was some one of, of the that, brightest. Uh, he was uh, one of the head uh, rocket scientists for NASA. One of the top Nazi rocket scientists came over, and uh, because they did the forget, rockets first, the, the V two rockets exactly, and they had another one in the works before uh, the war ended as well. But uh, before I forget, the, my favorite line from uh, Doctor Strangelove: They're in the war room, and then two people are like about to start fighting. He's like. You can't right. fight in here. This is the war room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is like the most yeah. funny like contradiction that <laughs> you can't fight in the war room. <laughs> yeah, we got to be polite and professional. Have some respect for the war room. There's no fighting in here. No, it's the war also, room. The war room is all about peace. It was like kind of like that's how I took it. <laughs> oh yeah. man. And, but like if you quit on that movie too early, you're like it's just attention span for older movies but if you stick with it it's great so but i'll uh, just like uh what's uh the um the space odyssey yeah 2001, uh, 2000, 2001. 2001 space odyssey yeah, so you got the first the like 20 minutes of the movie there's no dialogue yeah it's like and that's hard for and hard for monolith. people hard for people to get through nowadays you know they're like oh my god like what there's nothing happening and then they're like oh i gotta check my phone yeah you know oh do i have a, a message oh it's a twitter facebook you know the music that's was like, cool though at, at, during that time they got that like orchestra type classical of, music yeah yeah but it's like the high pitch like men vocals like church almost like church like high pitch like suspenseful vocals and they have it sustained so that that maybe help will help some people get through oh. yeah like <laughs> i can't even do it it's so hard oh. <laughs> yeah but like professional like singers doing it it's like i'm a professional with like and they put, have that reverb on there it's real wild i paid me a dollar one time <laughs> nice <laughs> so. so yeah adhd uh definitely is uh taken away from uh, a lot of things i don't know short yeah film has books. suffered nobody's reading books away. anymore because that's the ultimate i'm guilty of that too yeah well because like the, the mind just runs wild and that's why like i made that last video that i did like where it's all about once you bring it back to the now like sometimes I'll read a page here and there, and then I realize I drifted, and I didn't comprehend it because I was thinking about something else or reading the words on the page. Then I go sure. back, and I read it, and I maintain in the now, and yeah. you absorb At that it. point, maybe take a little break, and then you're, like, uh, you're not in the zone. But once you get into the zone, and you're really like focused in on it, then uh, yeah. then it's great. And really, you're, you really can really good. imagine things. Yeah. and. It's like reading can be really active too, because if you really try to picture a scene and imagine what the characters look like when that's read yeah. to you, and and it's interesting when you have an audio book as well, because when someone reads it uh, to you with a cool voice and do different characters, it, it it's a whole other angle to it that I uh, I liked. Um, I haven't. Um, I tried uh, getting through um, one of the new uh, the guy who wrote The Martian. Um, did you read that book? It's a pretty short no, one. I, I just uh, the, the Martian. Just the movie. Yes, that was based on it's a pretty new book. And uh, the, it's a good book. I recommend it. Uh, it's not very long. And it's funny. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot like the movie. And uh, he came out with a newer one after that, uh, which is really cool. It has a lot of cool science in it. And he does a good job making the science, like, uh, approachable and work it in where it's, like, entertaining. Hmm. And, um yeah, uh, as an audio book, that was pretty cool. Um, I haven't finished it yet, though. Um, but uh, I don't know. I'm like, I'm into so different parts. There's like, I'm a, into tech so much that like, I love like visuals and like, oh, my TV could do this. And this is like 4K and <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you that. know, it's and my harder. like sound system. And it's like, you know, I want to enjoy all that stuff too. But uh, yeah, books are still, books are still great. I was gonna say about hardcore history though, it's the best. Like Dan Carlin in one of the first episodes or whatever, he says, uh, history is so great that it ruined fiction for him. And for me, I'm pretty much the same. Like I have every single Dune book already downloaded on my Kindle and because I love history so much, like I can't 
read like a paragraph into dune because then i just feel like i'm wasting my time i could be learning more about history like so i'm me and him are on the same page with that and uh man, yeah there's truth in fiction though you know there is like but and sometimes it gets points across even better than history and fiction i could say i would say like it, maybe yeah. an avatar the movie avatar and history is you know. kind of just like another fiction because it's the author's interpretation of historical events yeah. and there's a wide kind of uh you know, it could be very different from one author to another trying to talk about the same historical events. Exactly. That's why the historians they have to account for everything plus the physical evidence found by yeah, archaeologists. Yeah, that's a debate. Yeah. And, uh, but the other thing, though, even Dan Carlin says this, and he heard it, I think, from somewhere else. He says that history is a bunch of lies uh, agreed upon. History is a bunch of lies agreed upon. And I heard him say that. Yeah, I forget which episode it was in, but I've listened to like every episode like three times at least. Is in the Mongol one like at least four times, and the Roman Empire one like four times. Because I'm always doing my walks, so I always like to uh, listen to stuff. Uh, walking's great, clears your mind and gives you time to you know feel healthy and learn at the same time. If you got some cool stuff going, so yeah, for sure. I got um. I like to go on hikes, and um, I just need to... I don't have that YouTube read, but I uh, am able to kind of uh, have, like, a podcast on my phone and, like, play on YouTube, and uh, I've done some Star Talk episodes that way. And it's weird because, well, it's funny because I'll, I'll be laughing to myself. <laughs> That's that something much. they say, and I'll be walking by people, and I'm just <laughs> laughing really loud, and it's like... I don't laugh too loud, know. but I, I, it happens yeah. to me where I'm like, I look, I'm like, oh, is somebody looking at me from that window? I hope not, because <laughs> I'm <just laughs> cracking up from some something that he says in the or that uh, story I told you last time about the Anabaptists where <laughs> in the uh, with the cages on the church in uh, Munster Germany like there were so many crazy parts of that story it was like I couldn't help but laugh you know yeah i find, i find stuff like that funny too people should laugh more in uh, like public and uh i don't yeah. know you know, uh, I heard that the most miserable place to be, like from Eckhart Tolle, who I featured heavily in my last video, uh, he says that when he went to Russia, he would be like going down the street and he would smile at people and everything. And Russians? Uh, oh, they don't like that. Oh, yeah, because they've had more trauma <laughs> than anywhere else on the planet. <clears throat> but... Uh, so yeah, like then he realized... And the colder people, it is, the less like you're friendly to people. Yeah, it's probably. like, ah, I deal with a lot of shit. It's cold. Yep. But uh, they've had to deal with the worst uh, massacres there there have been. Like Napoleon invaded them, and uh, Napoleon took over Moscow. And he thought, oh, as long as I get Moscow, well, the war is over. He was wrong. And Napoleon's troops, uh, it was in the 1800s, uh, early 1800s, I believe it was. So he took over Moscow. All the Russians retreated from Moscow. They didn't want the capital be, to be destroyed, so they all just left it in advance. And so Napoleon was like, like in the main government building and stuff. But like they took over that country. They killed so many people. And the Russians themselves, twice they have this, uh, uh, what was it called, the burning strategy? I forget. There's a word to it. Uh, something in scorched burning. earth. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, the scorched earth uh, strategy. So they didn't want to give Napoleon and his troops any place to have no shelter. military tactics. <laughs> yeah, uh, and the same thing happened when Hitler invaded. Be a and good so, general, command so, and conquer. I'd I mean, already done it many times. <laughs> <laughs> so think about how much trauma. There's no people on this planet that has had that level of trauma, the suffering, the trauma, and you know how to get through that suffering thanks to your pre previous videos that everyone should take a look <laughs> yeah. at. Yes, please do. How to deal with suffering, one of the previous uh, videos on our channel. It's the only reason and I've been If only those Russian people being slaughtered by Napoleon had access to the internet and YouTube, they would have been learned to accept that they not could the die death, and just to be people. in the moment. Not the dead No, and the, no, the ones who tough. see their friends dying you know they're like yeah you know, this like, guy's dying i might die too you know and also eh, you know, what can you do? yeah all that like i mean all it is what that video is all about is not adding another layer of of emotional suffering on top of what is and mm, right right so no matter what the no no reason is, to make it worse yeah, in your own mind, and, at least. And uh, the Russians, after uh, the Germans uh, lost the uh, Battle of uh, Stalingrad, 
the Russians were so angry. Remember, the the estimates are all over the map for how many Russians died, but uh, yeah. a good one that I saw was uh, 27 million. Well, we should do a whole podcast on uh, exactly. history stuff. We could focus on that. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're just bouncing around on conversations now. We're already done with the other stuff, so we could end this anytime, but I'm fine. I'm I guess chilling. so. Yeah. And so I, I, there was something there was something that led back to uh, the Tesla bot, but uh, I didn't talk, speak up and I kind of got lost. But it was pretty cool. No, I can't remember what it was because oh. it was like three topics ago now. Uh, what, what I was going to say, like uh, we'll do another one on the future of warfare. We'll uh, talk about how the Tesla bots and drone technology and maybe tank type drone technology could uh, affect combat and Will it eliminate the need for regular human I think troops? Tanks, tanks are just for show at this point. Yeah, in World War II, That's the, my hot take. the aircraft carriers and the airplanes proved to be the most uh, valuable weapons there were in World War II. And so taking out an aircraft carrier yeah. was like the ultimate goal. And then, so when the U.S. did that to Japan... And sure, you, it's like out, you're taking out a base. You know, if you can take out a base where they're launching forces from, that's huge. <laughs> But now uh, it's a whole different story. <laughs> but eh, you know we can do that. Uh, I'll save that for, yeah, for another we'll one. Save it. All right. Uh, well, should we just wrap? Yeah, have any more questions about? Uh, so you think you would go for Tesla stock? Because yeah, I think oh, uh, as sure, it goes lower now. Out. Oh, I mean, as it goes lower now, it's already at a big drop, and uh, so now is not bad time to uh, depend on how much you're going to invest to start mm -hmm. averaging into it as it's at a low point. And if it drops more, it becomes really juicy. You you feel a lot better if you get it near a low, yeah. and then kind of you you're up, you know, oh, for I a long period of time. It's a you it's a lot much better feeling, and then you're you're it's easier to hold on to it long term. So that because there's always going to be ups and downs, and especially if you're just in one stock versus like the S and P five hundred, where it's five hundred companies put together in one to one stock, basically yeah, more volatility. Uh, that gets averaged out. You're gonna have more volatility, more ups and downs, and it's the if you don't hold on to these truly great companies where. Tesla is like 20 companies in one. Yeah. It's, that's why I call it the only company I ever have to own because they are like, uh, it's, it's the, uh, the most valuable yeah. of all of them by far. Right. Pretty well. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's the potential is there. And I, I just, uh, there's uh, good evidence that they've been executed and they're going to be able to execute on things like the Tesla bot. And it's just a massive opportunity that's, uh, and I'm so happy that Elon's focusing on it now. And that's, uh, he right. sees the uh, high potential for that. Um, it's uh, amazing. FSD is already going to make it nuts. I mean, if FSD is actually successful and robo taxis <laughs> happen and uh, all these cars are suddenly turned on and start making money, like, that is going to be it's huge. Yeah. It's going to change everything. We're going to be able to jump in a car and uh, it's going to be super cheap. Like you never like, you'll, why would you take a bus or a train if you get your own autonomous Tesla car that shows up and it's just like a couple bucks to go mm -hmm. like, you know, a half hour drive even or something like that. It's going to be <clears throat> much cheaper than it is right now. I like it. And, they're, and, and for them, they can charge, it could be cheap, and they still make tons of money because of software margins. Like any dollar they get, they get to keep 80% of that. That's huge. Like that's no one, you can't do that in the car business. It can only happen in the software business. So the valuation that right now, if that happens, you could easily see Tesla like 5X or more just from that. You can see a $5,000 plus um like people who do models on this stuff they're like i don't want to share these numbers because they seem ridiculous and i think people laugh me out of the room really? but like people do these models where fsd actually works this is not even including the tesla bot they're looking like wait so if fsd works and they make this many cars and even being really like conservative on the amount of money they're going to get from this robo taxi fsd thing it's like wait they should be worth a thirty thousand dollars a share by twenty thirty. What's it at what? right now? It's eight hundred something. <laughs> yeah, these are, <laughs> these are the kind of numbers they get. Yeah, even conservative. And I then like you it. put in Tesla bot. Suddenly, Tesla bot works, and it's replacing. Uh, you know, the economy has no bounds, and there's no uh, like limit to uh, to uh, to anything. If you want to do something, you just get Tesla bots. You get a lease. 
and uh, you get a loan, and Tesla bots are able to do things perfectly and build things out, and uh, the, you can own and your boom. Own, what's stopping you from owning your own Tesla bot company for a specific industry there's nothing stopping you really can you buy like you could, you, you could be one guy and it could be all tesla bots under you and you could do a really complicated thing that would be like <laughs> super difficult to recruit for and hire all the right people you instead you just get a bot and it's like i maybe i want this software package where it's like it knows how to like uh, a mathematician software package i want the engineering package where it's able to design products <laughs> like but, that's more like the thinking thing where it's down the road designing stuff any, any but machine needs to be maintained what, what are they going to be like right. tin man from uh wizard of oz you gotta like put oil in its joints or some crap what, what do you gotta do to this thing to maintain it maybe recharge its battery every so often i wonder what it's going to be like yeah i think uh, maintenance is going to be pretty good like uh you see the same thing with electric cars there's just with electric motors there's less moving parts no, really, it's just going to be electric motors and like kind of like a computer. You know, it's like my computer, I don't have many problems with my computers. Have you had a problem with your computer since you bought it? Like anything fail? No, besides the, uh, yeah, I've had no, no like uh, hard, hardware failures, except for my fan has been was noisy for a while, but it seems to have worked itself out. But uh, software, I've had problems with the video editing software. Like five or okay. six major ones. But even now, like, yeah, the hardware in our computers, it's yeah. so freaking reliable. It's yeah. so long lasting. You not have to replace anything. Crypto miners are running these GPUs 24 <laughs> 7, like 50 of them together, and they're lasting like years and years. It's ridiculous. Oh. So it's, it's parts like that and electric motors that basically need no maintenance. It's going to be minimal. It's going to be. Uh, are they going to yeah. be needing uh, like a cord plugged into them for power then as they're working, maybe? Or no. Be a downtime? No, batteries. Batteries. So, but I think be uh, downtime it's, then. Because then you have to. It is, them. but it's going to be more useful for them to be mobile. Like, think about it. The people, maybe even though they. You can have a replaceable battery pack, maybe. Oh, that would but be I awesome. think. But I think it's the, I think design wise, they probably won't go for that. But think about it like you have the corded power tools versus the battery power tools. Like yep. everyone gets the battery power tools now. They don't want a cord. NASA You're so limited. That out of necessity, by the way. Oh, you yeah. Know. That's true. Yeah. yeah and Star NASA, Talk, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Neil yeah, yeah, deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Uh, that's where I learned <laughs> that from. You heard that too then. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's so awesome. Out of necessity, all the all the retards who are like, "Well, don't spend money up in space because we got problems <laughs> down here. Spend the money down here where we need it. Why are you wasting money up there? Well, how about your freaking power tools that you love so much? You know, you wouldn't have ones. Them. He, he he went over a bunch of other inventions that we take for granted now. Like I forget which yeah. ones. Uh, Velcro is one of them. They invented oh, okay. Velcro because of being in space. They needed to secure things. <coughs> now we got Velcro. That's like amazing how much weight like a Velcro strap can have. I almost knocked yeah. over one of my speakers not too long ago. Luckily, I secured it to a stand with Velcro and uh, like Velcro glue straps. Man, some yeah. of them are so hard to rip apart these days. It's crazy. My uncle used to work for a zipper company, and they invented a type of, uh, it was for YKK, they're like the biggest zipper company. They invented a type of Velcro that was super strong, and it was like, you could have a, like a strip and it would hold like hundreds of pounds. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. So yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think batteries, uh, you don't want it to plug in, because it's so much more useful if they're mobile. Then you could take them anywhere, you know? And True. and it's like what, and so saying, it's, that's standing? a good thing about a person. They're so adaptable. You and me, yeah, like could you could drop us into all kinds of situations, <laughs> and we're like we could do useful things. I was gonna that's say, like, like the robots are not. It's gonna. It's the, the robots now. It's like it's an arm, and it's all stuck in one place. It's, yeah, and yeah. And they're super expensive, and you know that's what we got right now. Say, we well, got like, a mobile uh, thing. Imagine like uh, if the robot w w was in place of "I Love Lucy," the Lucy episode where she's got the chocolates on the conveyor belt, and they have it. You, you don't want the robot. Wouldn't to eat them. No, but <laughs> no, but like <laughs> you don't to want worry the robot that. to uh, run out of charge. So it'd be nice to have at least like a charge thing to plug into the back of the robot if the robot yeah. doesn't have to move anywhere. If it's just th right, one that makes test. sense. And that way, uh, so yeah. yeah so that would be nice if they do have two separate uh, different models sources or sources of energy uh where as long as you're plugged yeah. in it doesn't drain the battery 
or you take the battery out and as it's plugged in and it works and it doesn't move and you can say robot do not move uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you gotta talk like a robot when you say it robot do not move robot like, like lex friedman acknowledge you just gotta have lex friedman in here. <laughs> lex friedman <laughs> Well, I love you, Lex. If you ever well, see it, do... but uh, <laughs> yeah, you're awesome. That's a robot. Yeah, <laughs> he is awesome. Uh, well, I, it, it, things are all thing. A lot of things are like that. It's like your phone, right? It's like uh, you can use it while it's plugged in as well. It will be like yeah, that because yeah, you're gonna exactly. you're gonna have to plug in for charging. So of course, like they'll still work if you plug them in, and it'll just recharge the battery, and they'll be working at the same time type of deal. <clears throat> yep. 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 So. All right. Well, I don't know if so, I have anything else to talk about. I know you wanted to keep it shorter. Was yeah. there anything else to talk about? Or are we wrapping this up? Well, I don't know. Valuation is fun. So if you throw out a number like forty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a share in 2030 based on FSD working, suddenly what if Tesla bots are working? What can Tesla be a uh, stock be worth by 2030? Is it, you know double triple 10 times three hundred thousand dollars a share the most it's pretty much the most important company on the planet it seems like because like they're going to transcend and it, it also maybe uh you should look into that social media thing with uh, elon if he starts his own social media company too on top of it making money like that i don't even know what it would be called or which uh company it would be or maybe a brand new company whatever it would be probably would be I yeah. would imagine so i don't like echo chambers though i hope it uh, wouldn't turn into something like that if he does it yeah, uh hopefully you know, it'll be just it'll be open everybody yeah yeah just, just gotta keep out the obvious hate that's all yeah and but i think uh yeah now it's not a bad the stock is beat up it's definitely beat up it's like 26 percent down from all-time highs it could go lower yeah it could always go lower but it can't go to zero at this point that the car business is making too much money it's already baked in a lot of they're going to be making a lot of cash so even if we go into recession and a lot of things fall apart it can only go so low. it's going to be backstopped by like just the assets that it owns you know you it know, owns a lot of assets so debt i don't see it great. going lower than 500 would be almost impossible even if we're in like a great depression depression type of situation a great depeche which, mode a great depeche yeah depeche mode. mode type of situation <laughs> oh that was awesome but uh, uh oh man i forgot the great depeche mode messed me up i was about to say something <laughs> i kind of want to hear a depeche mode song right now <laughs> yeah good stuff but uh all right yeah i think i'm uh, you've convinced me okay. at least uh, all the way uh, also by the way uh, like all the uh, podcasts like this is not financial advice you can right you have to us. do your own due, due, due diligence yeah, <laughs> yeah i so can't guarantee anything it's just my thoughts and i'm not a financial advisor exactly. and, and i so, think guaranteed but you know here. i i firmly firmly believe it i'm uh, putting my money where my mouth is and i don't i don't see like any place you could park it that's as sure a thing as tesla long term like oh. and seeing this focus on the bots just like renewed that <laughs> for me just made that stronger you know, we gotta do that, uh get them get them back on the joe rogan podcast and make them smoke a fat blunt with uh joe rogan again and make the so the price crash. drops even more yeah, I'll, yeah, get so buy it cheap. I'll get it i'll get it on that day <laughs> <laughs> it went down like over 10 percent when he smoked uh that weed on uh, joe rogan even though it's legal like what yeah what? i kind of uh i had a uh in the back of my mind i thought maybe they also microdosed magic mushrooms before they did that podcast because when they first started that podcast like <laughs> uh joe was telling elon he was like and mushrooms like everyone should do them they're like all kinds and he was like uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah mushrooms i wouldn't be surprised you know, there was some guests on uh joe rogan that have uh he's definitely done it on mushrooms well, he's they, done the show on mushrooms were, i forget before. which guest it was but uh there was one or two that they were talking about dmt and then they were kind of hinting that joe rogan had the connection for the dmt and of course he's always talking about dmt but yeah he's but, done it many times he said <laughs> oh yeah like uh uh there oh speaking of that uh michaela peterson talked about this on i think uh the tim pool podcast there was this guy who did dmt like 
many, many hundreds of times, and he claimed to have had a relationship with an alien uh, female like, entity. <laughs> and this is yeah, he did DMT video. hundreds of times. I think you'll get there. Well, yeah. So there's a, <laughs> a video on this. Uh, it's from Comedy Central that highlights it, and they have it. Uh, they have it nice and animated and cool about like this like crazy <laughs> trip stories or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, if you put it in on Google, anybody who's watching this. Just say the guy who did DMT and had a uh, relationship with an alien, and it's a, you hear it right from his mouth uh, the entire story. <laughs> it's it's pretty wild stuff. So yeah. yeah, all right, all right. Well, yeah. I mean, I could keep going, but uh, yeah, we could. Yeah, we're going long, so we can shorter, do another so. time. Yeah. All right, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out my channel, of course. Subscribe to Dead Man Dreams channel, of course. Check out my most important video i've made is definitely i've gotten better at editing as well and it shows everybody uh, all the people who've given me feedback have said it's way better the uh reduction of suffering is my uh most important video definitely check that out share it with anybody who's suffering i hope it uh really helps people uh to avoid you know bad decisions doing hard drugs doing suicides whatever like there's i've lost a lot of friends and i found uh strength the, despite having gone through far more than anybody I know, especially, you know, with ankylosing spondylitis, you know, so please check that out. Check out my uh, Nature of Reality one as well. The editing isn't as sharp, I admit, because it was I was learning the software and it was my first video since 2007, but I'm just getting better and better from here. So, yeah, please check that out and uh, hit me up on Facebook, on my Facebook page. I, I respond to most messages still. So, all right, and... Uh, Momentum Mori, remember you shall die. And Marco, go for your uh, outro. Tell them about your channel. Yeah, so uh, I um, I want to make more videos about Tesla. I'm uh, very focused on it right now. And I would be happy just making videos. There's people who make videos just about Tesla because there's so much news. There's so much going on with the company. It helps investors um, feel more comfortable knowing what's going on with it, especially if you focus on it exclusively. And it's just like a feel good kind of uh, knowing that they're making progress, that the people work for the company, um, they feel like they have a mission, that they're really improving things. And uh, you can kind of like join on that ride by like following along and seeing what they're doing and following the news and you learn about the new tech and you get a kind of a sense of where we're going because technology is going to keep changing the way we live and um, changing our society. So. Uh, if you follow one of the companies that is um, on the cutting edge of new technologies and they're already imagining these new things that are coming out years in the future, um, you're going to see that coming sooner than other people. That can have, um, uh, beyond simple curiosity, that can have advantages for you financially or, uh, I don't know, emotionally. Um, and uh it's a good way to be uh clued in and um and you learn new things all the time i mean just uh uh new things about science physics what's possible what's not i've seen people they start channels where they focus just on battery technology there's a guy who didn't have nothing to do with batteries before and all he does is talk about battery chemistry now and the types of batteries and like uh, how they work and he taught himself and he's teaching other people and people love it it's great i mean the, the gigacasting technology manufacturing is a really underappreciated um field uh especially since a lot of ma manufacturing has gone overseas and it should be more here um so that's a great uh topic that's a great field um is that what you're focusing on um no um i uh i don't know just uh general things i don't know yet uh i'm thinking of either starting a new channel or just changing my channel name possibly again but uh, i do want to just focus on that and um and if i could come out with a video every day about kind of just what's going on with the latest uh with tesla um yeah, and well. if that was uh would be helpful and informative to people i would be uh i could feel pretty happy about that i could be pretty satisfied tesla. doing that <laughs> i i have a channel already that i uh called thoughts on tesla that i kind of um i saved the name so it's like an empty channel and um uh i don't know i go for the alliteration a lot of times at least i'm like well that's something for yeah, a name yeah, it's if like if it's catchy it could be shared easier 
the fact that yeah. my name for this channel, so yeah so yeah I, I might use that you know my channel is like on a bunch of different topics uh, it's uh uh i started with computer reviews and like stuff and i recently did like a big thing where i moved uh, my computer from kind of one to another with a different case and i didn't even film it i was like uh it's like it's hard enough to do that i don't want to film it and do all that stuff too i was already in pain for like multiple days afterwards because <laughs> all the yeah. the awkward like kind of positions and all that stuff so oh, we're wrapping this I, up i'm gonna have to do my intro yeah outro a long wrap up everyone forgot about your outro at this point i've been thinking <laughs> forever so uh yeah so um that's about it so i don't know exactly what i want to plug at this point but uh if it's i put this on my channel then you'll see it here on my channel so just look at more of that or expect more tesla stuff to come cool. <laughs> all right uh everyone uh yeah love everyone uh you know be kind to others be kind to yourself and uh take it easy everyone good catching up with you brian and you too, uh man. have a good week you too all right guys outro for real this time much love to you guys always Treat each other with kindness. Uh, treat them Later. as an extent, the other as an extension of yourself. Uh, much love to you guys. Momentum Mori. I don't mean that in a grim way that you, you shall die. Always seize the day because the time is short. So every minute is precious. And that's all I mean by that. And so. I try to one up me, do another outro. Seize the day. All right, guys. Peace out. Also, be sure to check out my epic visual videos The Nature of Reality Part 1 and The Reduction of Suffering. They have the ability to change your worldview.